we got some mail and we're gonna open it. I think that's how I started the last one. This one's from London. Oh, there is correspondence. To open. I'm not open, I'm Steven. This is from Felix, so that explains the F. <laughs> um, Dear Stephen and Liz, I hope that the both of you are well. Over lockdown, I became very fond of watching your videos and decided to send in some stuff. There are some Megalosaurus toys here, with a couple of them being merch from the Natural History Museum of all places, besides two smaller toys that are from Felix's childhood. It would be great to see an episode covering Megalosaurus, given its paleontological backstory and how our perception of this British dinosaur has changed. Feel free to use the toys provided if you choose to do so. I've also done some fan art of the criminally unrelated novel, criminally underrated novel Carnosaur and an illustration of one of my favorite dinosaurs, only with some humor to it. Looking forward to seeing more of your future content. Regards, Felix. Well, thank you. So are these, are they all Megalosaurus? Because there's a, there's a few things in here, Felix. We have... This one's unlabeled, but it could credibly be a Megalosaurus. It's got sort of that meat cleaver head to it. Ooh. This one's kind of classic theropod. It looks like the Iguanodon we have. It might be Invicta? It is Invicta! And yeah, this one's even labeled Megalosaurus. wonder if it has a date. Nineteen seventy-four! Oh, jeez. Two of them. These... These just say made in China. I... This one looks like a Tyrannosaur. This one, I'm not sure. It's got such a straight stance. I wonder if it's supposed to be like a Dromaeosaur? I don't know. Mm. Ooh, this one's nice. This one looks very recent. It is definitely a Megalosaurus. Yeah, 2020. I don't know what company, though. That's very nice, though. I don't know... I don't know about the, like, ridge of, of keratin spines at the base of the tail. I don't know if that's based on something I don't know about. Natural History Museum Dinosaur Collection Megalosaurus. Which is from... Doesn't have a year on it. Yeah, no, no year. But I noticed this one is rather worse than It, I mean, it, of course it's worse than the 2020 one here, but in some ways it's worse than the 70s one? Like, I agree with you, Felix, that Megalosaurus would be a very good topic for an episode. Um, we have a couple of toys that I am in the habit of calling Megalosaurus. There's not one... There's not one on the shelf today, but they... 
they all have this very particular stance, which is, it's sort of standing like, and uh, I, I, when I was a kid, I always assumed this was Megalosaurus, but it, it, it seems that that's only based on, like, one piece of paleo art which was depicting Megalosaurus that these toys remind me of, and I don't know that the toys are actually meant to be Megalosaurus, so now we have a bunch of Megalosaurus toys, so I guess, uh, I guess an episode is a possibility now. <laughs> it is definitely up to the patrons. Oh, I forgot the fan art. I have to admit, I have not heard of Harry Adam Knight's Carnosaur. But we've got some, some theropods. One that's apparently some kind of Carnosaur, as the name would imply. Oh, it's a Megalosaurus, so it's not a Carnosaur. And then a Tarbosaurus, okay. And some kind of embryo. Which leads me to believe that the movie? Book? It's a novel. Leads me to believe that the novel is about genetic engineering of some kind. But, like I said, I don't know. And I don't know what... This is a Pelicanomivit. Pelicanominus. That, that is going, appears to be wanting to ignore the properly posted signage of don't eat these. But thank you, Felix. This one is from Richard in Alabama. And he's put some, some artwork for us on the box itself. We've got a Dynamo Terror that has apparently torn the head off of a very small Triceratops, or no, it wouldn't be a Triceratops. Uh, this is from the Me Menifee Formation, which I don't know anything about in New Mexico. And some kind of crocodilian just peeking over the edge of the composition there. Oh, we got a, a some kind of ankylosaur in the background. Some kind of ornithopod, I want to say. It's, well, it's so tiny, but it has, like, fully developed horns. I don't know what animal that's supposed to be. Maybe his correspondence will tell us. Hey. To the Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong team, your channel is one of my favorite things to watch, and you are such a positive influence on young dinosaur lovers. I've sent you some artwork with descriptions, as well as some of my old toys. A few of them have been modified to be more realistic and or interesting. Oh dear. Uh, I hope you have fun critiquing my figures and drawings, and I hope you have a great day. P.S. Please read this in a mail opening video. Well, you got your wish. Uh, sincerely, Richard. He's, he's drawn a whole bunch of dinosaurs, including Megalosaurus, so him and Felix are on the same wavelength. Uh, got Spinops, Baryonyx, we've got a Troodon, which he says he knows isn't valid, but would like to see an episode on it anyway, which is fair. Um, I, th I think Stenonychosaurus would cover every- well, no, because there's animals that were referred to Troodon that are now other animals as well, or animals other than Stenonychosaurus. Oh, and way up at the top, there's a there's a, a Beckel Spinax slash Alta Spinax. It's the little guy hanging out there. We have a a group of Trotayania Rosale or Rosalesi. I don't know anything about that animal. From from your description, I assume it's a carnosaur of some stripe. Like they they appear to be I don't know al allosaur looking. But no, I've never heard of this genus before. I, I enjoy the like bug's eye view with the beetle in the foreground. That's nice.
and then a, there's a, a small unfeathered animal of some kind being called out by a large, robust, feathered Uteraptor with the question, is it possible for Uteraptor to be too robust? To which I do not have an answer. And finally, oh my. There's a, there's 52 playing cards with dinosaurs on them. Are they? What? What? Wait. Oh, okay. I, I was concerned. So we've got the ace of spades is Albertosaurus. I was like, wait, did they find dinosaurs that would start with each letter? Is K going to be Kentrosaurus? Um, but it isn't. K is Megalosaurus. But, okay, so each card has a different dinosaur on it. Oh, there is a Kentrosaurus, though. It's the Joker. We have, oh my goodness, a Spinosaurus, which looks to be up to no good. Reminds me of a cartoon character, just... <laughs> we have a... Tyrannosaurus from 2006, which looks like it's from 1966. Oh my goodness. Is this a Baryonyx? I hope it is. What? Wait, what? Oh... Oh, oh no, I almost broke it. <laughs> anyway, some kind of Spinosaurid, I guess? Ah. Hey! A Placerias, I think. He drew a Placerias for us, so I would assume that's what this animal is. Which is not a dinosaur, it's a Dicynodont, I think. One of these guys. The, the, we have a big version of one of these. These are the ones that I think are, are supposed to be Megalosaurus, and I think, um, I think Richard agrees. I believe this is a custom paint job, however. Oh, there's a bunch of little ones. One second. There's a, a paper constructed ceratopsid that seems to have been collapsed a little bit. Let me see if I can... Oh, no. I, I assume this label went to this dinosaur? Is this what a Terminocavus looks like? You're, you're getting obscure on me. I don't, I don't recognize some of these names you're throwing at me. Sorry. We have the tiniest little, what I assume to be Spinosaurus. Just, just a real little guy. A, I assume Ornitholestes, because it's got that, that nose horn and feather quill neck frill going on that, that was popular with them for a little while. Another one of these that I often call Iguanodon, even though they're probably supposed to be Allosaurus. And it doesn't want to stay, there we go. I don't know what this guy is supposed to be. Some some kind of allosaur, I guess. It's it's got um, crocodile-like armor on the back of it, which is a choice. This one I think is supposed to be a uh, dromaeosaur or dinonychosaur at least of some kind. Oh, maybe that's supposed to be troodon. And. Uh, Centrosaurus? I think there is a ceratopsid that has just the two long horns at the top of its frill, but I don't remember what it's called. 
Y'all are really running circles around me today with these obscure taxa. But thank you, Richard. This is from Gardner. It's in a paint box. Oh no, it's from Troy. Hello from North Carolina. I am a big fan. I have been binging your videos since the summer break started. I have been a big fan of paleontology for the past three years. My wish to be a paleontologist is the only thing that got me through the boring parts of middle school. I'm hoping it will be the same for high school. I saw some of the, I don't use this term lightly, abominations that you have had on your show, so I thought I would send you a few of my own abominations from my childhood dino box. Enclosed, I have included a stegosaurus, which proposes an interesting theory about the anatomy of the cloaca. I... Is, is he talking about this one? Because, yeah, it wouldn't be able to lay that egg. Uh, also included a sauropod, of which the tag said Brontosaurus. Huh. I would, uh, I would have guessed that one would be a Diplodocus, but I guess it could be an Apatosaurus, sure. Or, no, Brontosaurus is valid again. I'm still not used to that. It's been years, and I'm still not used to that. Um... And the bane of my existence, Metricanthosaurus. Yes, Metricanthosaurus. Read its label. Well, we have a Yoshi and we have a Dimetrodon. Oh my goodness! <laughs> this one is supposed to be a Metricanthosaurus. Okay. So, this is not the first Dimetrodon that I have seen labeled Metriacanthosaurus. Is this just a thing people do? Is, did somebody somewhere in China, like, they were stamping out Dimetrodon, and they were like, wait, what was this one called again? And then the other one is like, uh, Metra something? Metriacanthosaurus? Probably. And then they just made a million of them. Anyway, uh, thank you, Troy. Oh. P.S. I also included a highly inaccurate theropod, which I believe is a Tyrannosaurus, possibly T-Rex. Oh, so that's the Yoshi then. I don't... I don't know what Yoshi is supposed to be. I'm not really up on Mario lore. I know that they are dinosaurs of some type. They've got four fingers on their hands, no feathers. Unless these are supposed to be feathers, and I don't think they are. I think they're just spines. Is it supposed to... with Smarties inside? But how... Does it stretch enough? For, it must stretch enough to get the egg out, right? Oh yeah, it does. Yeah, now, now we have a... That makes me uncomfortable, actually. <laughs> We have a holy stegosaurus. Isn't there a species of like frog that the eggs are in holes in its body? I have no idea. I swear this is a thing. But as Troy points out, no, stegosaurus would not <laughs> be engaging in such things. Next, this is from Ontario.
Oh, there is correspondence. Okay. This is from Cameron. Unless that's a French name, in which case I'm still going to pronounce it Cameron. Hello, Stephen and Liz. I am a fan of your show as it is not only educational but also entertaining. It is, it's helped distract me during a rough time in my life and for that I am grateful. Well, you're welcome. Uh, inside this package you will find a horrifying abomination. There's that word again. A horrifying abomination of a Styracosaurus and a very sad looking Achelosaurus. I would love to see an episode on Diplodocus and I hope you'll like these weird looking dinosaurs. I also included a fossil dino poop. Your fan Cameron. You sent us a coprolite? He sent us a coprolite? Huh. Unfortunately, it's completely devoid of provenance, so I can't tell you anything about the animal that did it. I mean, I wouldn't be able to tell you anything about the animal that left it anyway, but... Well, thank you, Cameron. This is the second coprolite someone has given me. If I could open it, there we go. Well, I assume this is the Achelosaurus? Achelosaurus? I've, I've only seen this word written. Is that the animal I was trying to remember earlier with just two spines on its frill? Did I just get lapped by a completely different piece of mail? <laughs> yeah, it's not labeled. And a Styracosaurus. Which is apparently not happy to be here. <laughs> uh, what is it? Look at its leg. It's given us the old razzle dazzle. That's how it wants to stand. Huh. Well, thank you again, Cameron. This one is from Michael in Virginia. Hey. It's a Smithsonian. Smithsonian using the Natural History Postcard. Dear Stephen and Liz, hope you're doing well and I enjoy your show. I recently had the opportunity to go to the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History and got a few items from one of their gift shops. I wanted to send some of these items to you for your amusement. Included in this package is a t-shirt, a small stuffed T-Rex with sound, a toy Allosaurus, a toy Brachiosaurus, and a Triceratops magnet. The picture on the front of this postcard is of the dino hall prior to the 2014 to 2019 renovation. I would like to request the return of the Allosaurus and T-Rex plush when you are done with them. Sincerely, Michael. Well, this is a very cute plush, so I understand why you want it back. What's the sound? I don't know. Oh, I feel a... Well... Well, that's just Godzilla. Oh, that's a really nice Allosaurus. Look at this guy. Got, got nice beefy arms, nice beefy tail. Got properly sized horns over the eyes. Yeah, that's really cool. What? This is 2019 Safari Limited. Oh, stand up. Oh, I don't know what I was expecting, but this is the Triceratops magnet. It's, it's just a head. It's, when you look at it straight on, it's very, uh, placid, I guess is the nice word for it. Oh my goodness. Right, this is the Brachiosaurus. 
which we now have at least three Brachiosaurus toys, so I guess we should do one of those. I like it. We have a... What's on here? We've got a Brachiosaurus, some kind of Dromaeosaur, a Pachycephalosaurus, Stegosaurus, Triceratops, a second smaller Stegosaurus. Let's, uh, let's go with a Patasaurus and a Theropod, probably a Tyrannosaur. Oh, and a Pteranodon in the background, of course. You gotta have a Pteranodon. Next, this is drop shipped, so I don't know who it's from. And there's no correspondence. So whoever sent this, thank you. It is Dinosaur Cakes by, oh geez, Jacqui Hine? A name I can't pronounce. Let's go with that. This is from 1991 and <laughs> Right on page one, we're getting off to a flying start with these dinosaur cakes. Which one is that supposed to be? I don't know. Um, it doesn't say. Flip through until we find it. Oh, you think they'll tell you how to make that specific cake? Well, yeah, otherwise why would they have a photo of it? Unless there's just... Some of these are... Kind of, I mean, this is just like you're making a, a sheet cake and then cutting it up and turning it into a sculpture. This is not a Tyrannosaurus because it has three fingers on its hands. <laughs> I like that they include a few little stats about the dinosaur. <laughs> this is Parasaurolophus. <laughs> this one, at least, you know, you can tell what it is. <laughs> I kind of like this one. This is supposed to be Euoplocephalus. It's a cute idea to use littler pastries for the, for the spines. You don't usually, you don't see too many, like, black and white striped Euoplocephalus. So points for, oh, that's all, okay, so some of these ideas I, I am here for. So here, here's a Ceratosaurus, and again, it's armored, but the armor is like little gummies, or whatever those are, little, like candies. This is winning. There it is! Oh no! It's supposed to be an iguanodon! <laughs> it's- I think it's based on the Crystal Parallel sculptures. Even then, what? <laughs> that, that's the, the idea, I guess, having this quadrupedal elephantine posture. That- that does explain the texture. Serves 20 to 25. That really doesn't explain the teeth. It's got like these sharp conical needles. Maybe they only had like a photo of the thing to work from. Anyway, the, the dinosaur cake on the cover is just the best one that I've seen in the book so far. Though again, that Euphocephalus was pretty clever. Well, whoever sent this, thank you. I will not be attempting any of these. What? There's a Yangchuanosaurus, which is so much better than the Tyrannosaurus. What? Did you actually have to look up a modern reference? Is that why? All of these, I, I think I might love this book, the Styracosaurus. <laughs> uh, I 
This one has some artwork on it. This is from Tucker in Washington. Tucker says, to the team at Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong, thank you for reading my letter and showing my art in the previous mailbag episode. It really meant a lot to me. Well, you're welcome. Uh, could you guys please do an episode where you explain how Troodon is possibly a dubious genus? A lot of, a lot of Troodon stands in the, in the post today. Once again, I've included a bunch of my artwork along with this letter, and here's a fun fact. I sometimes base the colors of the dinosaurs I draw off of modern animals, which is why I also include a greenish-yellow card that tells you what animals were the inspiration for the colors of the prehistoric creatures. Thank you for reading this letter and keep up the good work. Sincerely, Tucker. Did I miss? Oh, yeah. Ah. Again with the obscure genera. Oh, so this one's an intentionally inaccurate Ceratosaurus. But uh, what I was intending to get to is, is this guy. Z Zara Titanus, which I do not know anything about, but apparently the color scheme is based on the frog-eyed gecko. Oh, there's a bunch of these that I just don't recognize. So I can't even tell you, like, how good the art is. Not that I would be overly critical, because I like getting art from people. Oh, this one's even, isn't even a dinosaur. Ain't a scion. A Wolf relative, apparently. This is a Tlat- Oh my goodness. Tlatelophus. Which apparently is some kind of hadrosaurid. And the color scheme is based on the fan-throated lizard, which is a good choice. I, I, I like seeing bright colors on the crests of hadrosaurids, but again, I don't recognize that genera. That genus. See, I had to train myself not to say, not to pluralize genus as genre, so now I just say genera every time, so I've like overcorrected. And Yukalkan, which is a recently described animal. This is based on... Okay, well this is... I, I don't recognize... Now I recognize the dinosaur, but I don't recognize what you're basing the color scheme on it. A Teus Teu. Well, thank you for the art. I, I couldn't look at all of it on video because that would take a while, but I, I, I do appreciate it, Tucker. We've got a decorated envelope from California. I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, Uzair? I like the, I, I assume this is a Sinusaropteryx with the stripedy fluffy tail. We've got artwork and correspondence, and what appears to be a Triceratops. It's not labeled, but I feel confident. Uh, Dear your dinosaurs are wrong, you guys are the best, and I hope you do an episode on Albertosaurus sarcophagus. I also wanted to show you a sneak peek of a comic I'm making called Alberta. Uh, I've learned a lot from you guys. I loved the Rubiosaurus episode. Sincerely, Uzair. Turn. Oh! This is presumably an Albertosaurus. As well as artwork of a 
of an iguanodon bernasartensis. But you've you've made the the classic mistake of putting four more or less equally sized fingers on the front when that was not the case. Didn't mention what toy what what animal this is supposed to be. Like the only notable thing that I'm seeing right now is like how weird the epijugal horns are. They're sort of like these just little tabs coming off the sides of the face instead of being part of the structure of the face. And this is a Agathalmus? Is that what an Agathalmus looks like? I'm really not sure. <laughs> But thank you, Uzair. This is from Aiden in South Carolina. Oh my. We've got... What? <laughs> we have some art of a Carnotaurus. And the first thing that struck me was the little diagram pointing to its arm and saying, Useless! <laughs> Exclamation point. Well, let's not drag their forearms too much. <laughs> they clearly had some kind of function. <laughs> The, the meat-eating bull. Dear Stephen, my name is Aiden. Your Carnotaurus episodes of Your Dinosaurs Are Wrong immediately made it my favorite dinosaur, and that's why I drew it. Keep up the good work, and I can't wait for the next episode. P.S. You are great inspiration. P.P.S. Don't return. Don't return to South Carolina? To my knowledge, I've never been to South Carolina. Don't know why I would be banned. Are you proud of yourself? No. This one is from Joanna in Poland. Oh, this is the same person who sent us um, the Styracosaurus that we used in our Styracosaurus episode. The, the, the main one. We had a bunch of toys in that episode, but the, the purple one. Read me. No. Hello, Steven. I sculpted this and then it's covered over with a little sticky note that says in case you wanted to guess so that you could talk about it and about basal ceratopsians in general. Well, that's a hint. I'm guessing this is a sculpture of a basal ceratopsian. Oh! Uh, impressive. Look at its little hands. That's really dainty. I'm gonna put it back in this box when, when we're done poking at it because I don't want to break it. It is a Aquilops. Okay, in my defense, Aquilops looks a lot like a Cetacosaurus. But, um... Joanna sculpted this Aquilops so that you could talk about it and about basal ceratopsians in general. I want you to talk about it because I want to learn more about them, but in order to make this figure, I had to do some research anyway. Oh, irony. That is ironic, I suppose. There is a little bit of, like, prior media on YouTube and elsewhere about, like, how to restore Aqualops. I'm fairly certain that, um, Brian Ang, friend of the show, has talked about this before. Or I'm completely misremembering, which is also possible. Its coloration is based on the rhino-horned lizard, Ceratophora uh, something, which was a perfect candidate in my opinion. I'm aware of some errors in proportions, but I had to sacrifice something to make it stand by pedally. Oh, well, yeah, that's not an uncommon challenge. 
but if you want to be extra safe, you can make it support itself on its tail. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, it does. See, I automatically just put it, like, half tripod, but yeah, that's, that's skill, making that balanced. I'd appreciate it if you could send this bad boy back to me someday. I'm not in a hurry, however. I move quite a lot these days, so when you're ready to send it back, message... Blah, blah, blah. Best regards, Joanna... Oh, jeez. You did good last time in the Styracosaurus video. I believe you, and thank you, but... I'm pro I can't guarantee that I'm going to say it the same way I said it in the Styracosaurus video, because I don't remember. <laughs> Uh, Wojcicka. Thank you, Joanna. <laughs> it is a good color scheme, though, with the, with the black and white tail. I'm a sucker for black and white stripes on dinosaurs. I don't know why. Um... Oh, no. <laughs> Don't we st Yeah. <laughs> we still have the one of these that someone sent us last year. <laughs> it's a dinosaur advent calendar. <laughs> to be fair, we only still have it because we accidentally we, opened yeah. it after advent. <laughs> uh, this is from Brad. He says... This is a holiday-themed gift, so open it around then. Happy holidays! Thank you for the hard work you do educating and entertaining all of us. So is this... is this one food, or is it just dinosaur toys? Or do you have to open it to find out? I think you have to open it to find out. Well, I'm going to peek. Yeah, it's toys. I guess we'll have to open it on Twitter or something every day. Mm. Until Christmas. We could do that. I... I don't know. So... I have questions about the box art here because, like, aside from the premise of having a dinosaur-themed advent calendar, you also have Santa involved. And it's a caveman Santa. Which... So why would a caveman be celebrating Christmas? <laughs> There's even, they've got pictogram Christmas tree and stuff. This raises several questions. Also, it kind of looks like they took clip art of a Santa head and just put it over clip art of a, of a caveman. Like, those don't match. I recognize that I should be critiquing the awful dinosaurs, but this is this is raising like theological questions for me. <laughs> but uh, thank you, Brad. We opened it before Christmas this time. I don't even know if you were responsible for the last one of these we got. But yeah, thank you everyone who sent things in. Thank you everyone for watching. And we will see you next time.